My name's Karina, and I'm the creator of Outreach. My name's Sally, I'm the creative director of Outreach Junior. And my name is Corey, and I am the community manager of Outreach. We know how much you guys love wrap-ups, so we thought it'd be a lot of fun to share some of our favorite books that we read in the month of February. Let's get started. So one book that I read this month and really enjoyed was Dress Codes for Small Towns by Courtney Stevens. So this is a story about a girl named Billy and her five best friends. They call themselves the Hexagon and they're completely inseparable. Billy is struggling with her gender identity as well as with some new romantic feelings that she has for some of her friends. I found it to be a really realistic look at how messy friendships and relationships can be as well as the pressure that you can feel when you're different living in a small town. Billy was also such a funny and vivid main character, I absolutely adored reading about her. Uh, this book comes out on August 29th. So my first book is The Shadow Cipher, which is the first in Laura Ruby's New York series. This series takes place in this sort of alternate bizarro New York City, which was designed and built at the turn of the 19th century by the Morning Star twins. So uh, before their mysterious disappearance, these two architects actually build a puzzle into the bones of the city. So from like the top of their skyscrapers to the actual underground tunnels that run throughout the whole city. So after we meet the Morningstar twins, the story flashes forward to present day, um, where we meet the three main characters who live in one of the last remaining Morningstar buildings, which has just been bought by an evil real estate developer. So the three of them decide to follow the clues of this still unsolved mystery in order to save their home. This of course puts them into all sorts of dangerous and exciting situations. I finished this book right before we left for the real New York, and a little part of me was disappointed that the amazing machines and robots and hybrid animals that uh, take place in this story are not actually roaming the streets of the real New York. Um, but uh, yeah, I cannot recommend this one enough. It's uh, it had so many twists and turns and just unexpected things that happen and it definitely kept me on the edge of my seat. So this one comes out May 16th and I definitely recommend picking it up. The first book I'm gonna talk about is The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay by Michael Chabon. This book follows Joe Cavalier who is an amateur magician who flees Nazi invaded Prague to America. There he moves in with his cousin Sammy Clay who is an aspiring comic book artist who convinces him that they should start their own comic book. This is a really interesting book about the origins of the comic book industry. But much more than that, it really focuses on the relationships between all of the characters in this novel. This novel is pretty chunky, it's over 600 pages long, but when it came to the end, I just wanted to keep reading more about these characters. It was also really fun to see their made-up comic book hero, the escapist in this novel, as at times it felt like you were reading a real story as they mentioned Marvel and DC Comics and other things happening at that time. This book now just holds a special place in my heart, and if you're at all interested in comics or historical fiction, I really think you'd like it. So another book I really loved this month was Dare Mighty Things by Heather Kaczynski. This is a story about an Indian American girl who's participating in a really intense competition. The winner of the competition will have the opportunity to go on a top secret mission with NASA. I love this story because the competition was so fierce and interesting to read about. There's also a huge element of mystery as you're trying to piece together what the secret mission will actually be. It was also extremely diverse with characters from all over the world. Another thing that I thought was awesome is our main character also identifies as asexual. And I've never read a story with a main character that identifies that way, and I thought it was awesome. Cassandra does have her flaws, but I still found myself rooting for her every step of the way. If you think that you'd be interested in this really unique sci-fi story, I definitely recommend picking it up, and it comes out on October 10th. The next book on my list is Orphan Island by Laurel Snyder. This one has been getting crazy good reviews. Um, and I know it's only February, but I have a sneaking suspicion that this is gonna remain high on my best of 2017 list. The whole story takes place on this beautiful, lush island where nine kids live together off the land. Every year a boat shows up on the island um, and it brings a new young arrival and takes away the oldest member of the island. No one knows how or why or where the boat comes from, it's just how it is. So the story takes place through the eyes of Ginny, who has just started her year as the island's elder and follows through her footsteps as she teaches the rules of the island to the newest arrival and also grapples with the idea that at the end of this year she will have to leave the only life she's ever known. I was totally enthralled by the elements of magic realism woven through the island as well as the very real uh, relatable feelings of a girl both very frustrated with childhood and desperate not to leave it. This was just such an unexpected story and has really stuck with me weeks after finishing it. Um, it comes out on May 30th and it's 
absolutely fantastic. I really recommend it. The next book I'm going to talk about is The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon. I'm pretty sure most people know what this book is about already, but just in case, this book follows Natasha, who is an undocumented Jamaican immigrant who is about to be deported from the United States. On her last day in New York, fate's in line and she runs into Daniel, who is the son of a Korean-American shop owner. Throughout the day, they have adventures together while trying to figure out a way for Natasha to stay in the country. If you like contemporary books, this is a really good one. It's so sweet and charming, but also has a really good message to it. Another book I really enjoyed this month was Release by Patrick Ness. Now, I'm not going to go into too many details about this book because I find it's best to go into Patrick Ness's stories completely blind. They're never quite what you think, and this story is just as surprising as his others. This story follows a gay teen named Adam over the course of one monumental day in his life. I found it to be the perfect combination of funny, heartbreaking, and hopeful, and I couldn't put it down. I actually finished it in one sitting. It was so good. I definitely recommend this book for older readers, as there is some mature content in it, but if you're okay with that, then you should definitely pick it up. It comes out in the UK on May 4th, and it comes out in North America on September 19th. My next pick is an older title, and one that had been on my TBR list for years, um, and I'm so glad that I finally made the leap and picked it up. It's The Complete Persepolis by Marjan Satrapi. So um, Persepolis is a graphic memoir that tells um, Satrapi's story of growing up before, during, and after the Iranian Revolution in the late 1970s. The comic format of this book was such a, an approachable entry point for me into a part of history that I really knew nothing about before reading this. The artwork in this book is quite simple. It's all just black and white drawings, but it opens up such a complex, fascinating, funny, heartbreaking story. One of my favorite parts of this book is when a 13-year-old Marjan is rocking out to the kids in America alone in her room, which I have definitely done as well, um, only I didn't have to smuggle the tapes on the black market. The book is full of little relatable moments like that that connect you to a story that you may have otherwise thought you had nothing in common with. The book obviously deals with mature subject matter, but uh, I'd say anyone 14 and up I think it's definitely worth your time. The final book I'm going to talk about is A Conjuring of Light by B.E. Schwab. Obviously this is the third book in a trilogy, so I can't tell you a lot about what the story is about, but if you're unaware, Our Darker Shade of Magic follows Kel, who is an Antari, who is a magician who can travel between parallel Londons. One day, when Kel is in Grey London, he meets Delilah Bard, who picks his pocket, and their adventure takes off from there. Guys, I love this book so much. I read it in two days. It was so good. It's huge. It's like well over 600 pages long and I just cannot say enough good things about it. This has quickly become one of my all-time favorite fantasy trilogies, and I just can't stop thinking about it. The characters in this book hold such a special place in my heart, and there's no way I'm gonna forget about them anytime soon. So those were some of our favorites from that we read this February, but we'd love to know what you've been reading as well, so please tell us down in the comments. If you wanna see more of what we're up to, subscribe to our channel. We post videos every Wednesday and Saturday. Happy reading, and thanks for being awesome. Bye! Bye.